evening. The bright sun was extinguished, and the stars did wander darkling in the eternal space, rayless and pathless, and the icy earth swung blind and blackening in the moonless air. Morn came and went and came and brought no day, and men forgot their passions in the dread of this their desolation, and all hearts were chilled into a selfish prayer for light. Cheery stuff. Lord Byron wrote those words in July of 1816, inspired by the year without a summer. What Byron didn't realize was the reason that the weather was so unremittingly bad that year was because the year previous to that, Mount Tambora erupted off the coast of Indonesia, the largest volcanic eruption since records began. Which begs the question, how does a volcano erupting thousands of miles away have such a marked effect on the weather in Europe? Well, it's all about the way volcanic ash plumes spread out through the atmosphere. Dr. Jeremy Phillips from the University of Bristol specializes in ash plumes and is on hand to explain. To represent the Earth's atmosphere, he's filled up a tank with salt water, with dense water at the bottom and less dense water at the top. What you can see is a, a plume source, and that's going to represent a, a volcano like Tambora erupting. The plume rises up, the mixture then finds a level in the tank where it's the same density as the fluid in the tank, and then it can't rise any higher and it starts to spread out across the tank. Okay. And this is essentially what happens with volcanic plumes in the Earth's atmosphere. Typically this level is somewhere between 15 and 25 kilometres high in the, in the atmosphere. The, the density of the lower air forces the plume up and, until it finds a lower density air and then it just spreads exactly. out right across And it. you can see these uh, large clouds can spread until they circle the whole globe. When Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull volcano erupted in 2010, the resulting ash plume covered most of northern Europe. By comparison, the eruption of Mount Tambora was around 1,000 times bigger. Its ash engulfed the entire world. In what became known as the year without a summer, the ash blocked the sun's rays, causing climatic extremes that not only inspired Byron's poem, but brought famine and death to tens of thousands across the globe. Here's what's left of Tambora today, a gigantic crater three miles across. But there are other volcanoes out there which make even Tambora look like small fry. This is Yellowstone National Park in America, and it's the site of a so-called supervolcano. Incredibly, the entire park sits inside a giant supervolcanic crater, or caldera. It's nearly 60 miles long, more than 30 miles wide, and it last erupted over 600,000 years ago. Scientists think that there are at least 50 supervolcanoes on the planet. None have gone off for at least 26,000 years, so it's difficult to imagine just how immense these eruptions must be. Dr. Jenny Barclay, a volcanologist from the University of East Anglia, has some explosive experiments to give me an idea. The first involves a film canister, milk, food dye, and Alka-Seltzer. That was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm hoping that wasn't supposed to be a super volcano, though. No, and this is one that we would call VEI-1. Okay. So VEI is Volcanic Explosivity Index, and that is a one, and it goes from zero up to eight. Okay, zero just being... Lava. Just lava, right, yeah. okay. So this one is just a little Hawaiian type of explosion, quite small compared to a super volcano. Oh, that's, that's a one, it goes up to eight. Eight being a super volcano then. That's right. And here, representing a number eight, we have a bin. What are we using in here? Well, what we've done is we've filled the bin full of water, and mm -hmm. that's going to be some of our magma. We're going to put some lovely coloured balls in to be broken up magma coming from our explosion. We're using this contraption? We are indeed using this splendidly made contraption, which basically allows us to put a little bit of liquid nitrogen into liquid the Liquid nitrogen! Yes. yes! OK, so what we need to do is put our safety gear on. Right, yo. <laughs> I like that I've had to take my glasses off and put glasses that are only slightly nerdier looking on. <laughs> well, you're part of the gang now. So I will pour in the liquid nitrogen. Right. And it's going to turn into a gas and pressurise this and cause an explosion which is going to drive up 
and give us a sense of the difference in size between these two types of eruption. And it gives me a chance to play with liquid nitrogen. Let's retreat to a safe distance. Ah, and there's a super volcano. That, that was beautiful. That, that was quite a beautiful and colourful portrayal of a global catastrophe. <laughs> When Mount Tambora erupted, it threw out over 50 cubic kilometres of volcanic material. But a supervolcanic eruption could erupt at well over 1,000 cubic kilometres. That amount of ash could trigger a long and sustained volcanic winter, which could last years, if not decades. And if we were really unlucky, plunge Earth into a new ice age. Yeah, what are the odds of one of those erupting? Eruptions of this kind of magnitude, the supervolcano, typically go over hundreds of thousands or millions of years. So there will be another super eruption, but the likelihood, the chance of it happening over our lifetime or our children's lifetime is vanishingly small. So there we have it. Over the last week, I've learned that there's a lot more to a volcano than simply a hole in the ground bubbling out lava. There's all kinds of different reasons why one volcano will erupt in one way and another will erupt another way. Gas content of the lava, viscosity, pressure changes. I've also learned that if Mother Nature decided to unleash a supervolcano, it could wipe out the entire population of the Earth. But apparently the odds are it won't happen in our lifetime, so that's reassuring.